Every chip inside your smartphone, laptop or even a car begins with one language, Verilog. But what exactly is it? And why is it so important for VLSI engineers? Verilog is a hardware description language, also called HDL. Now, unlike C or Python, which are used for software, Verilog is used to describe hardware. With Verilog, we can model circuits like adder, flip-flop, processors and even big memories all using code instead of drawing logic gates by hand. For a design engineer, Verilog is the language to write RTL that is register transfer level code. This RTL is then synthesized into real hardware gates. Whether you are building a FIFO, an ALU or even a processor core, you will code it in Verilog. For a verification engineer, Verilog play an equally big role. It's used to build test benches where you apply inputs, run simulations and check whether the RTL design is working correctly. This step is super important because it helps catch bug before the chip is manufactured. So in short, design engineer build with Verilog and DV engineer test with Verilog. That's why Verilog is called the foundation of cheap design and verification. What the most important building block in Verilog? Without this, you can't write a single design. It's called a module. A module in Verilog is like a box that describes a piece of hardware. It defines the functionality of your circuit. It has inputs, outputs, internal signal and logic. Every Verilog program from a simple gate to a microprocessor is written inside a module. This is the general syntax of a module. So here module is the keyword used in the Verilog and module name is the name you give to your design. Port list contain input, output or in out. Here AND gate is the module name, A and B are inputs, Y is our output. And the logic is y is equal to a and b. Some key point about module. A design can have multiple modules. You can instantiate a module inside another just like connecting blocks to build a bigger system. Module can contain continuous assignment, procedural block, wires, ridge and instances of other module. A module itself doesn't take any data types. Ports are declared as input, output or in out. So, Verilog use a hierarchical design approach. For example, a CPU module may contain ALU, register file and control unit as a sub modules. This makes the design structured and reusable. So remember, module end module is the foundation of Verilog. Without it, there is no Verilog code. In Verilog, data types are very important because they decide how signals are represented, stored and updated. This is not just theory, it directly affects how you write RTL for design and also how you verify it in a test bench. First one is NET. NET represent connection between hardware components. They cannot store values, they just reflect whatever is being driven on them. Second one is registers which is represented as reg. A ridge can store a value until it's updated in a procedural block like always. But remember, ridge does not always mean flip-flop. In simulation, it's just storage. In synthesis, behavior decides whether it's become a latch or a flip-flop. Next is vectors and arrays. Vectors let you define multi-bit signals like buses. Array group multiple vector or arrays together. Signed versus unsigned. By default, Verilog numbers are unsigned. With signed, you can represent both positive and negative numbers. And other types are integer, which is basically 32 bit signed, which is useful for loops and counter in test bench. Now, next is real, which is basically a floating point which is used in simulation only and next is time which is 64 bit and is used for delays and time stamps. So if you are in design, data types help you correctly model wires, storage and buses in RTL and if you are in verification, they decide how your test bench variable hold values, generate stimulus and compare output.
In Verilog, operators are symbols that perform specific operations on operands like numbers, signals or expressions. They are very important because almost every circuit you design, adders, multiplexer, shifters, comparators depend on operators. First one is arithmetic operator. These are used for basic maths operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and modulus. Relationals and equality operator. It is used to compare number like greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to and it returns true or false. Next is logical operator. These are used for conditions and decision making like logical and, logical or, logical not. They treat the whole expression as either true, one or false, zero. Next is bitwise operator. These work bit by bit on the vector like bitwise and, bitwise or, XOR, bitwise not. Next is reduction operator. These apply an operator across all bit of vectors and return a single value. And it is useful for parity check where all zeros or all ones detections are done. Next is shift operator. These shift bits left or right. We have here logical left shift and logical right shift. Next is conditional operator. This is a shorthand if else. In hardware, this directly represents a multiplexer. So in very long, arithmetic does maths, relational compare values, logical is for true or false, bitwise work per bit, reduction collapses a vector into a one values, shifts move bits, and conditional is like a max. In Verilog, we describe hardware behavior using procedural blocks. These are special code sections where we write sequential statements. The two main blocks are initials and always. First one is initial block. It executes only once at the start of simulation, commonly used in test benches for applying stimulus. Here the example of initial block. Now second is always block. It executes repeatedly whenever the sensitivity list triggers. It is used for modeling combinational logic, sequential logic and test bench activity. Here is the example of sequential logic and combinational logic. Now there is a difference between synthesizable and non-synthesizable. So synthesizable is code that can be mapped into real hardware like flip-flop, gates, muxes. Example of Synthesizable are always at the rate passage of clock, which originally becomes a flip-flop. Non-synthesizable. Code used only for simulation, not real hardware. Example, initial begin and then end, dollar display, delays. Key difference. Initial execute once, simulation only, non-synthesizable. Always are execute forever, it is synthesizable and depends on the logic. Blocking or non-blocking. The most asked Verilog interview question. In Verilog, if we use equal to, then it is for blocking and greater than equal to is used for non-blocking. Blocking execu executes step by step like a normal C code and non-blocking execute in parallel at the same clock age. For blocking, example is A is equal to B and then it is written C is equal to A. So it will execute step by step. First, A will get the value of B. After that, at another clock age, C will get the updated value of A. It means new value of A. But with non-blocking, if we consider example A is greater than or equal to B and C is greater than or equal to A. So in this case, A and C will get updated at the same time. They will execute parallelly. So A will get the value of B, but C will get the old value of A because both updated together. Blocking is used in combinational logic because step-by-step -step execution matches the equations. And in sequential logic, we use non-blocking because flip-flop update together on the same clockage just like real hardware. So here's the golden rule. Use blocking for combinational logic and use non-blocking for sequential logic. If we mix them together, then they can cause race around condition. In Verilog, a sensitivity list decides when an always block should run. Think of it as the wake up call for the block. So what is sensitivity list? In simulation, an always block executes whenever the signals inside its sensitivity list change. For example, here a Verilog code is given. 
in which we have taken always at the rate a or b and then y is equal to a and b here the block runs whenever a or b changes the first one is at the rate in bracket which is basically a shortcut manually listing all signal is a error prone that's why verilog 2001 introduced at the rate in bracket asterisk it automatically includes all signal on the right hand side here the example of the shortcut one and next is sequential versus combinational for combinational logic we use the shortcut one like at the rate in bracket asterisk for sequential logic we use clock is like always at the rate passage of clock q is less than equal to d this means the block wake up only on the positive edge of the clock if you miss a signal in the sensitivity list the simulation may show latch like behavior or incorrect result but synthesis tools usually assume complete sensitivity so the mismatch can be dangerous so in short sensitivity list decide when always block run at the rate in bracket asterisk ensure correct combinational logic at the rate passage clock or negage clock is used for sequential logic missing signal in sensitivity list is equal to simulation versus synthesis mismatch in large designs writing the same code repeatedly is inefficient that's where tasks and functions come in they let us divide the design into smaller reusable blocks just like subroutines in c the first one is task in verilog a task is like a mini program it can have multiple inputs and outputs contain timing control like hash delay or at posage clock and can call other tasks or functions here the example is given in which task takes two inputs calculates the sum and displays it now the second one is function in verilog a function is like a calculator it always returns a single value rules for functions it must have exactly one output return value it cannot contain timing control hash delay at posage not allowed it must execute in zero simulation time here the example is given in which function performs bitwise and operations and directly returns the result in interviews you may be asked Why would you use a task instead of a function? Answer: If you need multiple outputs or timing control, use a task. Otherwise, use a function for cleaner, faster code. In Verilog, the case statement is used for decision making. It's similar to an affairs ladder. but much cleaner when you have multiple choices the first one is basic case the normal case compares an expression against several options only the matching branch executes this is the example of case here cell decides which input goes to y always use default to avoid latch inference second one is case x Case X is a relaxed version. It treats X and Z as don't care bits, both in the case expression and the case items. This is the example of case X. It is flexible but risky in simulation. If your signal has an unknown X, case X may still match a branch and hide bugs. And the last one is case Z. Case Z is safer. it only treats z or question mark as don't cares unknown x values are still considered so bugs are not hidden this is the example of case z that's why in rtl coding case z is preferred over case x so to summarize case use it for strict comparison case x it ignores x and z use carefully mostly for test benches Case Z it ignores only Z or question mark safer in RTL. In Verilog, 
Generate blocks are used to build repetitive or conditional hardware during elaboration before simulation even starts. Why is generate important? If you need multiple copies of a module or logic, instead of writing it manually, you use generate. This makes code cleaner and parameterized. What is genvar? Inside a generate for loop, we use genvar instead of an integer. Why? Because genvar is a special variable that exists only at elaboration time, it does not take simulation storage. That's why you cannot use integer inside generate. This instantiates or in a easy way, it create four full adders automatically. Without generate, you would have to write four instantiations manually which is longer and error prone. Conditional generate. Here, based on parameter width, the tool selects which hardware to build. Key points to remember. Generate executes at elaboration time, not during runtime. Genvar is mandatory for loops inside generate. Case, if, and for can all be used inside generate. Generate block is for hardware replication, not like software loops.